Okay, what we're going to do is to represent the uh, kth term of the Fourier series more compactly. And to do that, we remember that e to the j theta is given by cos theta plus j sine theta. This is just a standard uh, uh, the Euler formula. And so, uh, now that we can, if you, if you take uh, e to the minus j theta, that's going to be cos of minus theta, which is still cos theta, minus j sine theta. And so, we can see that uh, e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta over 2 is going to be cos theta. And e to the j theta minus e to the minus j theta by 2j equals sine theta. And that just kind of comes, uh, obviously follows from this. And so what we can do is that we can take uh, this term over here and this term over here and represent this in the following way. We'll, we can see, we find, we, I'll just keep this on the screen. So xk t is going to be given by ak by 2 e to the j k omega naught t plus e to the minus j k omega naught t plus, and here's the sinusoidal term, b k by 2 j, and here we have e to the j k omega naught t minus e to the minus j k omega naught t. And so that just follows from the substitution. And now let's define two helper terms. We'll define uh, C0 equals A0 from before. We'll define CK equals 1 over 2, AK minus J, BK, and C minus K, which is just the values for K less than 1, is 1 over 2, AK plus j b k and this is all for k greater than zero so uh, if we do this we substitute these values of c k over here and we collect like terms the by mean by that i mean taking the a k by two term and this term and then these two terms together what you'll find with very simply is that uh, x k can be given by x uh, x, x of t can be given by x t equals c0 plus sigma k equals 1 to infinity c k e to the j k omega naught t plus k sigma k equals 1 to infinity c minus k e to the j minus k Omega naught t. And uh, if we take these two together, we just realize that you know this is from 1 to infinity, 1 to infinity, but has minus k in it, so we can simplify it even further to write x of t is given by sigma k equals minus infinity to infinity c k e to the j k omega naught t where c k is defined over here c k and c minus k actually pop out from that so uh, this compact form is really quite useful and this is what we'll be using in the future so this is the uh, Fourier series expressed as complex exponentials it is equivalent to the sinusoid but perhaps uh, easier to understand for some people and uh, it essentially shows that xt can be represented as the scale sum of compact of complex exponentials. These are complex exponentials, e to the jk omega naught t, which also happen to have the property that they're harmonics of the fundamental frequency omega naught t. Moreover, we can write ck as ck is given by 1 over t naught integral 0 to t naught xt uh, e to the minus j k omega naught t dt, which is uh, sort of how we get from the, uh, so this allows us to go for, uh, to represent xt in terms of ck, and then we can find the ck values using this integral over here. 
So uh, to fix ideas, it's probably worth doing an example at this point. And so what I'd like to do is to walk through a very specific and important example of using the Fourier series. And I'm going to focus on this particular series. So remember, we need to have an infinite uh, it, periodic signal. So we're going to use this particular signal, which is a series of pulses, which are all exactly the same, and they're exactly repeated over and over again. And so I'm just drawing three. But um, these pulses are of width tau. And so that means that the uh, this is minus tau over 2. This is plus tau over 2. And uh, also the rep period repeats after every time t naught. So if you take a look at this part over here, sort of halfway between, uh, this period over here is t naught. So that's the infinitely repeating signal. And my question, or what I want to look at is, what is the Fourier representation of this infinite series? It's inter internal periodic signal, so this re they should be representable by, periodic se uh, by a Fourier series. So we want to find out the Fourier series. And of course, what we mean by that is we want to find the values of CK. And that's this value of CK over here. So we have this equation over here. Um, Note that uh, we can take CK over any time period T0. It doesn't really have to be from 0 to T0. It's, a, in fact, it turns out to be simpler for us to look at the time period from minus T0 over, minus T zero over 2. This is minus T0 over 2 to plus T0 over 2 because uh, then it's symmetric about 0. And so we can write CK as the, uh, as the following. We can see that CK is going to be the integral uh, of xt in this range 0 to t naught or minus t naught over 2 to plus t naught over 2. But xt itself is only defined, it's 1, actually I forgot to mention, it's 1 over here and uh, this is all 1. So it's 1 over here uh, for the range minus tau over 2 to plus tau over 2. And in the rest of the range, it's 0. It's a 0 over here, it's 1 over there, it's 0 over here. So this integral, it just reduces to a somewhat simpler integral uh, which is CK equals integral minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, because that's the time where X is, is, is. And then XT is just 1, so you just get E to the minus JK omega naught T DT. Okay, so that looks like a complicated thing, but uh, what you have to realize is in this particular equation, this part over here, JK omega naught, is just a constant. It's just some value, think of it as some constant multiplying t, and we know that d e to the t by dt equals e to the t, and so d e to the kt by dt is just e to the t by k, and so what that means is that we just need to divide by kt to find the integral. So, I'm sorry, I should have made some mistake over here. So I am confusing, okay, so, what I meant to say is this is k e to the kt for d. And so the integral, so the integral of e to the kt is going to be nothing more than 1 over k e to the t. And so here we have the pre-multiply e to the minus jk omega or not. And so the value of this integral is going to be just minus 1 over jk uh, sorry, this is going to be 1 over t naught. So minus j k omega naught t naught. So that's just the, because the t naught comes from over here. Um, e to the minus j k omega naught t. And we evaluated at two values, tau by 2 and minus tau by 2. And that's just all there is to it. And if you plug in the values of tau over 2 and minus tau over 2 over here, this reduces to 1 over j k omega naught t naught. And over here, we have e to the uh, j k omega naught tau over 2 minus e to the minus j k omega naught tau over 2. And this is the difference between two different sinusoids. So this is, this is the difference between two different sinusoids. 
And we already saw that when you have the difference of two different sinusoids, this is two different sinusoids like this, that looks like a, a, a sinusoid. It's a sine theta. And so we can replace this with sine theta. Uh, but of course, theta is k omega naught t by t. So we can write this as equal to uh, tau over t naught. And uh, so it's, it's sine k omega naught tau over 2 by k omega naught tau over 2. It's this whole thing kind of like that. So uh, this is uh, something of the form sine x by x. This is what it looks like. So ck, the kth value, is tau over t naught sine k omega naught tau over 2. And this just follows from replacing this over here with the sine and collecting the k omega naught, k omega naught down to the denominator over here. And uh, and we're also multiplying the numerator and denominator with tau over 2. So we have this tau over 2 value carried over here. Um, and this now we can see that ck has got no terms in it which are functions of t. In fact, ck is a function only of tau, right? And it looks off the form something like sine x over x. So uh, what we can do is that let us define, so, okay, so we're going to do a couple of simplifications. Um, so we, we're going to define this function uh, x omega, okay, uh, is given by tau omega naught over 2 pi sine omega tau by 2 by omega tau by 2. So let's just define this particular function x omega, where omega you can think of as being uh, 2 pi over t, or omega to 2 pi over t naught, actually. So that's the harmonic. And if you look at this function over here, uh, this is essentially a scalar of uh, this is a constant over here, t omega naught by 2 pi is a constant, so it's independent of omega, and everything here is being done in, uh, is, is in the omega tau by 2 over si omega, sorry, sine omega tau over 2 over omega tau over 2. And so it, these are sort of the values, uh, this, these over here, this function over here are the values taken by x omega at the points omega naught, 2 omega naught, and so on. So uh, ck can then be written as x of k omega naught. So just to recap what I'm doing over here, we obtained ck over here sort of pretty straightforwardly by solving uh, the integral for ck. And so we got this value over here, which I rewrote in this format. And what I'm saying is that if we have a helper function capital X omega over here, then uh, I define it in this way. This is the definition of x omega as t omega naught by 2 pi sine omega naught tau by 2 by omega tau by 2. And then ck is the value taken by x omega at the values uh, at the points k omega naught. So essentially, if I plug in omega naught over here, I get the first value of ck. If I plug in 2 omega naught over here, I get the value of c2. Etc. So the values of ck are obtained by the values of x omega. So what does this mean is that let us, uh, if we were to draw out x omega, then we could obtain ck as points along it. So uh, what I'm going to do is first let me show you what uh, x omega looks like, generally speaking. I'm not doing a very good job here. In a moment, I'm going to actually show you the uh, uh, proper picture. But uh, the uh, C0 is this value over here. And uh, C minus 1 is over here. C minus 1. This one is C plus 1. And, and so on. So there are some values where 
C, the value of C, the constant is zero, but these vertical lines represent essentially the points uh, where, so these values on the ends of these vertical lines essentially represent the constant CK, and these are obtained as the uh, values taken by the function X omega at the values omega naught, two omega naught, three omega naught, Etc. This is omega naught over here. That's C1, C2, C3, and so forth. This is C0, this is C1, this is C2. And so there's some values where CK is zero. The other values where CK is non-zero is positive or negative, but they correspond to the points where this function is, uh, is there. So what is this function? And there's a hint. It's actually sine x by x. This is the value over here. And so what is sine x by x? It's worth looking at that. This is called the sinc function. Sinc of x is defined as sine x over x. And it's obvious right away that uh, at x itself, this is going to be undefined. It's going to be 0 over 0. So we define, so this is sine over x and x not equal to 0. And we'll define it to be 1 when x equal to 0. And it's easy to show that uh, limit uh, x tends to 0, sinc x equals 1. A, a simple Taylor expansion will show you that that's the case. And so what we're saying is, okay, what does sine x x look like? Essentially, uh, if you look at sort of uh, when x is greater than 1, so this is x is greater than 1 or minus 1, it looks like the sine function, except that we're dividing by this value x, so it diminishes over time. So whereas, whereas the sine function keeps going like this, the sine x by x is going to be attenuated more and more, and so it sort of dies off over time. So it gets narrower and narrower over time, and at the same time, it kind of goes narrower and narrower, amplitude diminishes linearly over time. Between uh, when x is greater than 1, it essentially has one big hump in the middle, uh, and I'm not doing a very good job of that either, but that is the uh, where it reaches one at uh, uh, at at the value zero. So that's that's roughly speaking how to understand sine x over x. And so what you're saying is that the uh, coefficients of the Fourier series corresponding to an infinite series of pulses correspond to the values taken by the sinc function at discrete values of the quantity omega naught, where omega naught is recognized as being the fundamental frequency uh, corresponding to 2 pi over t naught. Omega naught is just 2 pi over t naught. So stepping back once more, so what you're really saying is that if we take an infinite series of pulses, then that infinite series of pulses corresponds to uh, a series of coefficients, can be represented by an infinite series of coefficients where most of the amplitudes are zero. They're very, very small as we go further and further away from the central value because we do, do, we're dividing the sine x by x and x goes larger, it's very small. So we can think of this as saying that most of the energy, the amplitude is concentrated in, close to the origin and there's very little amplitude outside. So if you were to ignore the higher coefficients of CK, then it's not going to change the values very much because we are not going to change. So we can think of the this pulse train, uh, this uh, train of pulses, as being represented by a small number of coefficients of uh, the Fourier series and ignoring the higher values. So in some sense, if you were to draw a box like this and say, okay, we don't care about amplitudes smaller than some value, we're going to ignore those. We're going to represent not exactly, but almost exactly the function with a small number of coefficients. And this representation with a finite number of coefficients, a small finite number of coefficients, is what allows us to take complex signals or complicated signals and represent them using just sinusoids. And this is roughly speaking what we do when we take an uh, image and we and compress it using JPEG. Because in JPEG, we use what's called a discrete cosine transform, which is related to the Fourier series. It's a two-dimensional transform, but it allows us to convert the an underlying image into a series of coefficients. And if you terminate or truncate the series, we get a small representation which still happens to be adequate and to the human eye cannot be distinguished from the real figure. So that is the sort of the idea behind the uh, the the uh, JPEG uh, representation. But uh, for the Fourier series, I'll stop with that. 
And I'll encourage you to, again, go to the book and go through this to make sure you understand how the the, the, the uh, coefficient CK are derived as the values taken on by the X function, the capital X helper function. Uh, now, X is a continuous function of omega, but you only care about the discrete values assumed by it at certain points in, uh, in harmonic space, which are corresponding to 2 pi over T naught, K 2 pi over T naught.